Hello YouTube, uh, Jerry Kirkpatrick here. I just got a an order for 25 shovels uh, up in Montana, and as in uh, as was stated in my last video, uh, things are going to get kind of different. I've got to make these into these and that's going to take some forging on the treadle hammer which you can see right over my shoulder uh, there's going to be some questions so I'm going to go through the dies first uh, this is the bottom die made out of half inch thick material the base of it is cut to the final size of the bottom. Uh, it has two guide pins here and one here which is a stop for the blank to go in to fit in. This notch is for the tongs to place the hot part in. Uh, these other pieces here are just to maintain it on top of a spacer block that I have on top of the, uh, the treadle hammer. The top die is made out of uh, one inch thick uh, hot rolled material. Uh, the hardest thing to do when making this was maintaining this draft angle with a cutting torch. I laid it out with a silver pencil and then just followed that line but I had to maintain this angle all the way around uh, and then some final uh, shaping and that gives me the inside of the shovel blank. Uh, just a piece of uh, three by three by quarter inch uh, square tubing welded on top and then just a plate to strike upon. Uh, after they go through this set of dies they come out looking like this with the back of it uh, all wrinkled. That's because of the gather in the rear and then I'll be going to this to straighten the back of it out and this is just a big piece of heavy wall tubing spacer and the two pins in the back that keeps it in line uh, on the treadle hammer so I know there's going to be uh, a bunch of questions about the treadle hammer so let me walk you through that uh, real quick and uh, then if you have any questions you can ask them later. So this is a treadle hammer. Uh, the head weighs 60 pounds. Uh, it starts out with a uh, piece of railroad rail two pieces of three-quarter inch uh, plate welded to that and then a three-quarter by six by six face on that to keep it uh, nice and flat. Uh, the top link and the spring are 18 inches on center and that keeps this face horizontal throughout its range. Uh, it's just a piece of uh, four inch channel in the back. Uh, these garage springs are garage springs. Uh, just ones that the guy next door to me had. So uh, that's how it was designed. Uh, it's got a connecting link attached to the treadle uh, the treadle is just one by two rectangle tube. Uh, the front is a one inch thick wall uh, support for the roof 
in an uh, industrial building. It went up and uh, supported the beams. I just cut it off to the, the height that I wanted. Um, what else? The, the spring itself, uh, this bottom one, is the only one that needs to be a spring. Uh, and this one is off of a 1968 uh, Dodge Power Wagon main leaf with just uh, a three quarter inch pipe, uh, no, half inch pipe drilled out to five eighths, which are five eighths bolts all around. And uh, you have to be real careful how you weld those on. Uh, the way I did these was uh, I made the first pass with a MIG uh, and you could also use uh, uh, 6011 or 5P. 5P is good. Uh, and then I put a wash pass over that with 7018 with a stick. And that allowed uh, the different materials becoming a little bit more homogeneous and didn't create a uh, fracture line behind the weld on the spring. Uh, so by bringing the heat up, it, uh, I hate to use the word annealed, but it uh, didn't leave a, uh, a sharp line from the hot to the cold. Uh, read about that stuff. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. I have a set of plans that you can get off of my uh, website. Uh, I've got these things all over the United States and in kibbutzes in Israel, uh, just all over the world. Uh, this one was my was the original the prototype and I used it for two years before I made up the drawings and started selling them commercially um, if you decide that you want to build one uh, which is not much chance of that but if you want to build one there's two things that you will have trouble uh, getting and that's it, that's why I quit making them is you need uh, in the plans it calls for four inch square tubing with a quarter inch wall both on the head and the bottom and the head has to be filled with 50 pounds of lead uh, I used to get it free at tire, tire stores and then uh, when all the regulations came in had to start buying it, so I just quit. Uh, the other thing is the springs. I used to have, have to have 25 at a time made, which was no problem. Uh, had bet springs up in Oregon make them. Uh, more drop forge uh, down in the Bay Area made several of them. Uh, just they became so expensive. Uh, even at 25, I just quit doing them. And uh, uh, one of the reasons that they became more expensive because the uh, spring makers didn't like making a Berlin eye on the end of the spring, uh, which means instead of just the, the eye on them, I had them center the eye on the spring itself. So. Um, I guess that's enough about the uh, the treadle hammer. Uh, now I'll show you real quick uh, about my forge. So this is my forge. Uh, I designed it back in the 80s, and uh, I've got these things all over the United States, back in New York, Texas, uh, Southern California, Bay Area. Uh, a lot of the California Blacksmiths Association members uh, back in the 80s, early 90s, uh, 
bought a lot of them because they're so efficient. Um, I guess the most prevalent thing is the door being all busted. Uh, it broke, so I was going to pour another door, uh, but after I used it for a little bit, before I made the repair, I found that these two openings here were just perfect for doing chisels, punches, uh, pokers, rakes, um, different twists, uh, splits and drifts, all of that kind of stuff. So I just left it and the doors are counterweighted. Uh, I don't know if you can see that counterweight or not, but uh, I don't have to uh, use a lot of force to get the, the, the doors up and down. It has a, uh, an adjustable uh, rest that is even with the floor or I can get it out of my way like that. Uh, the top is two layers of two inch ends wool by AP Green. I pour my own uh, bases. This is all castable, refractory. I make all the frame. Uh, the blower is 150 CFM with a 60 uh, inches of water column. Uh, that way when I use the slide gate I don't lose uh, any back or don't gain any back pressure and make it back up through here. All of it still goes out through the forge. I made the cone going from square to round. Um, where the gas comes in, there's another short nipple up in this T that was welded shut and then a sixteenth of an inch uh, hole was drilled in it and I mark uh, one of the facets of the plug in the bottom and make sure that that hole is pointing downstream and by having that uh, nipple sticking up in there it helps turbulate the uh, the gases as they go out and are being burnt. Uh, the burner block I cast, uh, those are out of a castable refractory also and uh, the expansion rate is uh, from two inches to four inches in six inches and that allows the uh, propane, it's a propane forge, to uh, expand and mix and when you're looking in there you can see that the uh, the fuel is not ignited until it reaches right at the end of the burner block so everything is is very well balanced in that in that way and I'm only using about uh, anywhere from five to seven uh, pounds of pressure using a uh, acetylene regulator. So uh, there's nothing sophisticated about that. Uh, I think that's just about all, all there is to, to that.
Now that'll put the sweat on the brow. It's the last one. Now let's see how we uh, straighten out the back. So I know most of you have seen this uh, many times, but I know there's probably two or three of you out there that have never seen a freshly forged stack of 50 shovels. Okay, so here's all 50 of them uh, with a really screwed up back edge. So I'm going to use obviously the treadle hammer with this big piece of uh, pipe. So uh, let's get these straightened out. There's the first one. And he wants one more right there. There we go. Nice, smooth arc. And not only will this take the, the bump out, but I can control the angle of the back edge of this. Um, it creates that angle when it comes out of the other die, the forging, the forging die. <clears throat> so I, one of the first things I do when I pick it up and take a look at uh, how the shape is, I can make a determination whether I pick this up slightly or I can pull it down slightly, meaning this face here. And by changing the angle of this face, I can change the angle of this back edge. And you can see right now I have a little air gap here. I'm going to bring this whole thing up. So, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not, but uh, by going through that one more time at a different angle, I've brought this back edge in sharper. So now I have only 48 more to do and I'll be done. You can see that there was a uh, fairly good size wrinkle right in that area. It's that one right there. That takes a little more, so I, I work it out just like, uh, just like I would be uh, tuck shrinking. First thing I do is gather the material and then I highlight it. I look at the light bouncing off of it and then I can see if there's any waviness in there and if there is I'll smooth that out. That's why it took a little extra time right in that area. So uh, after you use one of these things for 35-40 years uh, it'll come natural to you.
magnet in a bucket. So there is how to build 50 shovels in an afternoon. Pretty dang easy, wasn't it? Uh, with the right tools. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like what was happening here. Uh, tomorrow morning I'll put 25 of these in a box, send them up to uh, Montana, and all will be right with the world. Bye.